welcome back to my channel so today i am back with another video and this time i'm gonna be doing a really pretty set of valentine's day nails so before i started applying the nail tips i did a soak off so i've already removed the shine from her natural nails but as you guys know for that i use a 180 sanding band once i finish removing the shine then i go in to apply the nail tips as you can see, these nail tips are not the same ones that I always use. These are actually from the nail supply store, which are a bit thinner, but they're a little bit longer than the ones that I usually use. And this is my girl that gets the long nails all the time. So um, again, they are a little bit thinner, so you'll be noticing that I'm going to have a hard time shaping those nails. And I actually just seen a comment about that um, on one of my videos. She was saying that her nails were a little bit hard to shape because they're so flimsy. And you just have to make sure that you hold them while you're filing. But um, your shape is not going to be perfect before the acrylic so just make sure you spend that extra little time after you apply the acrylic to shape them really really good and that's what i'd be having to do but again we're just applying the nail tips remember that when you're doing this you make sure that the nail tips are the correct size if one tip is too big and the other one's too small always go with the bigger one and just file the size down a little bit to make it fit perfectly but you want to make sure that the nail tips fits on the nail like literally perfectly because if not it's going to either crack or it's going to cause the nail to lift and then as always i'm using my kds glue to apply the nail tips and also another thing is to make sure that you're holding your client's fingers super straight to make sure that you don't glue the nail tip on crooked and if you do just cut it down soak the nail off and then reapply it so this is the part where you would usually trim the tips down but my client wants to keep them this long so since she does want the coffin shape and actually the middle finger or actually no the pinky and the pointer finger she wants some stiletto so i'm gonna cut them a little bit more narrow and then the rest will be coffin so i'm using a straight edge nail clipper as you can see the edges on the nail clipper are straight i don't know if anybody noticed that um, but you want to make sure that you're using this one because if not it's going to cut the nail incorrectly and it's going to be like really rounded so once you cut the edges off we're going to go ahead and start filing as you can see it's pretty flimsy so you have to make sure that you're not too rough because if not the nail tip will bend and break so again for the pinky and the index finger we're going to be doing stiletto i know there's a lot of people that don't like the different shapes on a set but she loves doing this so whatever makes her happy um as always i'm using a 100 100 nail file and again it is going to be a little bit harder if you're filing the tips that are a little bit flimsy but as you can see whenever i file the free edge i hold the nail tip that way it's not just moving all over the place and then i'll make sure that you focus on filing even better whenever you actually apply the acrylic because it's going to be a lot more easier because the nails it's not going to be flimsy and then as you can see to just blend the nail tip i literally just file like where the natural nail and the tip meets and that's just going to make the nail tip look a little bit more natural once we apply the acrylic but um we're just filing the sides at a 45 degree angle and then filing the free edge at a 90 degree angle to make sure that it's nice and straight Yeah. 
So once I'm finished shaping the nails, I'm going to go ahead and dust them off. And I'm going to go in with the primer. So I use the OPI Bondex. As you guys know, this is the one I use because I have a lot of OPI primers. And I'm applying that on the natural nail. You don't want to get it on the skin because if they have any cuts, it will burn them super bad. And for my acrylic, I'm going to be using my Mia Secret Acrylic System. And for my brush, I'm using my Alpha Brush in a number 9. And then I'm also going to be using some glitter, which is by Coco Glitter Bell. And this is my heart glitter. I believe it's like the pink hearts and they're like the iridescent color. And we're going to be doing this on, I believe, like two or three nails on each hand. So as you guys know, whenever I'm applying glitter, I do a layer of acrylic first. And then I come back and apply the glitter. That way, if I want to take off the glitter the next time, I can just file it off and there will still be acrylic underneath. So to apply the glitter, I literally just get a small bead of acrylic and then dip that bead of acrylic into the glitter. And then I apply that on the nail. So as you can see, I'm just spreading the glitter out over the whole nail and then just apply more if you want to. And then we're going to come back and encapsulate that glitter with the acrylic. As you guys know, to encapsulate, I just use the same Mia Secret pink acrylic. But you can use clear, whatever you feel more comfortable using. I'm going to go ahead and let that ring finger dry a little bit before I encapsulate the glitter. And then you do want to make sure that when you're using these thinner tips that you focus on the tip or not necessarily focus, but make sure that you pay attention to your tip to see that it's not too thin because with the nail tips already being thin, you don't want your acrylic to be super thin because if not, your tips will break off, especially the stiletto nails because they're already really narrow. So make sure that you look at your nail from the sides to make sure that you have a nice apex as well as a nice, nice thickness on the tip so you will see me you know looking at the nail from the side a lot and also adding more acrylic if i need it so now i'm gonna go back and encapsulate that glitter the reason why i want it to wait is because when the glitter is still kind of wet it kind of moves around or not the glitter but the acrylic is still wet um once we apply the glitter it kind of moves around the glitter so i wait a little bit and then i come back and encapsulate it and remember that one thing that's really important when encapsulating glitter or just anything you want to make sure that the acrylic is not too thin because if not when you come back to file you're gonna come back and file away your glitter or whatever it is that you're encapsulating so as always make sure that you look at the nail from different angles and that you have a nice arch and your tip is thick enough so just keep adding acrylic where it's needed um, until you have a nice nail so same thing for this nail we're gonna go ahead and apply the acrylic over the whole nail so we do one bead and then we brush it all over the nail, making sure we clean around that cuticle area. Then we dip that brush into the liquid and into the powder. You get a small bead of acrylic, dip the bead into the glitter, place it on the nail and just spread the glitter all over the nail and just add it wherever you want it, whether it's just the tip or the whole nail and then after that we come back and encapsulate it once it dries a little bit um sometimes i wait sometimes i don't it just kind of depends on how the acrylic is acting whether it's drying quick or not um but i think for this set we're gonna do these two with the glitter and the thumb and then the pointer finger just regular acrylic
Alrighty, so we're done with that hand. So now for this one, we're basically going to do the opposite of the other hand. So we're going to do the pointed fingers or the stiletto nails with the glitter. And then we're going to do the other two or actually three fingers just normal. So same thing. We apply a small bead of acrylic over the whole nail. Come back and apply the glitter and then come back and encapsulate that. And again, I'm using my alpha brush in a number nine. As you guys know, I do have a promo code for them. And then I also want to mention that. And um, the brush that you use is really important just because if you use some that are like super cheap, the acrylic's going to get stuck in it and it's going to be nearly impossible to you for you to be able to do a good set just because every time you pick up a bead, I promise that acrylic is going to get stuck to it because I actually just had a comment on somewhere i can't remember where i seen the comment but she was saying that her um acrylic was getting stuck in her brush and every time she used it it was really hard so you do want to make sure that you invest in a good brush and i have not had any issues with alpha brush and as you guys know i do have a promo code for them which is natalie 10 and it gives you 10 percent off your order and i just highly recommend them also if you are a beginner i recommend that you start off with a like number eight or nine brush just because you have more control of the product that you're using and then you're not having to clean up a lot around your cuticle area because you're not picking up enough acrylic for it to be all on the sides or the cuticle area if that makes sense so make sure that you that you have a good brush because that's probably one of the most important tools of you doing nails like that's going to be your baby and you have to take care of it really really good so you don't mess it up so um after each client i soak my brush into a little dappen dish with acetone yes i use acetone i know a lot of a lot of you guys don't like that because you guys feel like it dries out the brush but I only soak it for about 10 minutes. I was using brush cleaner by Tammy Taylor, but I ran out and any, I mean, none of my stores uh, around me sell any brush cleaner. So I just go ahead and use acetone, but again, I only soak it for about 10 minutes and then I just let it sit over on the side for it to dry. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And then of course it's important um, to use good acrylic. I use the Mia Secret acrylic system. I've been using that for a while now and it works really good for me. I have no problems with lifting. So if you are a beginner, I also recommend that you just go ahead and invest in a good acrylic system instead of buying like the little cheap ones from Amazon. I understand, you know, you might not have the money um, at the moment, but Mia Secret does sell like the small containers of acrylic that aren't really expensive. But I recommend you just go ahead and get a good brand instead of just trying a whole bunch of bad ones that are going to dry super fast, that are going to lift, or that could possibly be MMA. So hopefully those little tips work. But I'll be sure to leave um, all of the products that I use down in the description for anybody that's interested.
Alrighty, so now once we finish applying the acrylic, I'm gonna go ahead and reshape the nails. So I'm just using that same 100-100 nail file that I used to shape the nails at the beginning. And you wanna make sure that you do not skip this step because if not, your nails are not gonna be that perfect shape that you want. As always, we just go back and file 45 degrees on both sides and then filing the free edge at a 90 degree angle for your coughing nails. And then your stiletto nails literally just falling at a 45 degree angle on the side. And then you just make it as pointed as you want. But um, as you guys know, once I say as you guys know a lot, but I don't know what other word I can use. But as you guys know, I um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, as you guys know, yeah, I'll be back.
I still can't remember what I was going to say, but once we finish reshaping the nails, we're going to go ahead and just file all of the nails with the e-file. And I'm going to be using my fine drill bit. Or if you don't have an e-file, um, I hope you guys remember that you can always just use your hand file to do a full set. You don't have to have an e-file. But I'm using my fine drill bed and we always start around that cuticle area just going back and forth, back and forth until you're able to see where the cuticle is, where the natural nail is and where the acrylic is. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. Just following around the cuticle area and then just following the rest of the nail as well. And then also make sure that when you're doing this, you keep your drill bit moving. You don't want to keep it in one spot for too long because it's going to cause friction and it's going to cause your nail to burn i'm pretty sure everybody has had that happen where your nail like just burns really bad and it makes you like pull away well that means that they left the drill bed on your nail for too long like on that same spot for too long and it causes the nail to burn and you guys know that that is not a good feeling but um again just going back around that cuticle area literally just going back and forth back and forth following the rest of the nail and then also make sure that when you're doing this you look at the nail from the sides to see if you have any little bumps and then you can file those away as well um but yeah that's pretty much it and then if you are a beginner this part will take a little bit longer just because i know that as a beginner it's a little bit harder to get a really smooth application and the only way to get your nails really nice and smooth and even is by filing them really really good um so make sure that you file the cuticle area with the very tip of your e-file and then just filing the rest of the nail with the belly which is like the middle of the drill bit i don't know if you guys can tell but i'm using like all of the drill bit or like the middle of the drill bit to file the rest of the nail and and then the very tip to file around that cuticle area and it's really important that you focus on that cuticle area just because if you have any little gap in between that acrylic or your natural and the acrylic you will get lifting because any water lotion any just any liquid or moisture that gets trapped underneath the acrylic is going to cause the nail to lift or it could even cause you to have a little green spot under there and we know that those are not cute so you want to make sure that you seal around that cuticle area and yes it's going to take some practice to finally be able to perfect it and even then you still you know sometimes you still miss something and you might get lifting on a few fingers but um with practice it eventually gets better over time So once I finish filing all of the nails, I'm going to go in with the buffer to make sure that they're all nice and smooth. And I think earlier somebody commented about whether the buffer is a file. A buffer is actually like a sponge and it does have like a greedy feel to it. But um, it just moves at the nail. It literally just gets rid of any of the scratches left on your e-file. You do want to make sure that you don't use like a super rough buffer. Um, I believe the ones that I use are like 180. So they're not super, super rough. Or I'm actually going to look it up to see what grit they are. 
but I promise they just get rid of any of the scratches left on our on your nail from the e-file or the hand file so just buff really really good and then always go back and feel on your nail to see if you feel any little scratch and if you do just go back and buff some more but um, I actually forgot to file that one so I went ahead and just went back and filed around that cuticle area and buffed some more so now I just wipe the nails off, dust them off and wipe them off. And I'm going to be doing the chrome on the nails with no glitter on them. So for that I'm using my IBD gel top coat and we're going to cure these for literally only 60 seconds. You don't want to leave them in there for more than 60 seconds because if not that chrome will not stick to the nails. And I'm going to be using like that fairy dust chrome. So you do have to use a non-cleanse top coat and as you guys know my IBD gel top coat is a non-cleanse so that works perfectly, perfectly for this. Um, but also take into consideration that all top coats are different, all lights are different so yours might require for you to either cure a little bit longer or a little bit less but it's just going to be a trial and error to try to see what works for you best whether it's curing for 30 seconds 60 seconds um but again i just do a layer of ibd gel top coat and then cure for 60 seconds and with a makeup wedge sponge i just dip it into the chrome and just apply it or rub it on the nail and that's pretty much it i am gonna come back and do a design on this so i'm not gonna do a top coat just yet but you do want to make sure that you always apply a top coat over your chrome because if not it's gonna just come right off Okay, so for our designs, we're going to be using some Madame Glam Gel Polishes, which is this pink one in the color Spring Petals, the white one in the color Perfect White, and Amor Azul, which is um, that blue one, and it's really, really pretty. Again, these are, these are all by Madame Glam, and as you guys know, I do have a promo code for them. So what we're going to be doing is basically like the little hard candies. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. But as you guys know, they have like words in them. So we're just going to be doing a few on each hand and I am going to switch them up. Some will be on top of the glitter, some will be over the chrome nails. So we're going to be doing um, three on each hand, which will be just one of each color. So I'm just drawing the hearts with my little nail art brush. And then since they are gel polishes, we are going to have to cure them. But I'm literally just freehanding the heart so they all will look a little bit different. My 
So once I finished drawing all of the hearts, I'm going to go in with this regular nail polish by D&D in the color Fuchsia Touch. And then she's just going to want like different words inside the hearts. So for this one, we're going to just do Bay. We're also going to do um, Kiss Me or Bite Me. I can't remember, but you will see me just do the letters. And um, you don't want to make sure that you're using a smaller brush for these. And then she also didn't want the letters to like, I know this sounds crazy, but she wanted them to not be perfect, I guess. So you will see me come back and um and actually like trace over them again to make the words a little bit thicker and then you also see me come back and change them to all capital letters especially on this one because that's what she wanted and she didn't say something until like after i did them so you will see me come back and just take them off with my little cleanup brush and for that i use the alpha brush which is a french brush in a number six and i also have a promo code for that one um but yeah i think that's pretty much it so i'm just going to be doing different little phrases in each heart and um again this is in the color fuchsia touch by dandy So once I finish drawing the hearts and doing the letters or the words, we're going to be applying some bling. 
So as always, I use my Mia Secret Draw Resin. I use my wax pencil, my SS6, my SS12 blank. And we're just applying them randomly on the nails. Um, basically just around that cuticle area. But like some nails will be different. And then I'm also going to be using a few bigger pieces. So again, that was Mia Secret Draw Resin. As you guys know, I get that from Amazon. And I'll be sure to leave the link in the description. And then I also use the activator. So if you see me spray anything, that's the Mia Secret Draw Resin an activator which is just a spray that helps that glue dry a lot faster because since it is a gel resin it means that it is a thicker consistency than regular nail glue is so it takes a bit longer to dry but with the activator it just instantly dries the glue so i do highly recommend it Okay, so once we finish applying all of the bling, I'm going to go in with my 
IBD gel top coat and we're just gonna be applying that over all of the nails and then we're gonna cure each hand for 60 seconds Alrighty y'all, so here is the final look. They turned out really, really pretty. I just love that glitter and the bling. And I just love that length as well. As you guys know, she loves her long nails. So they look really pretty. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram at GetNail32. And happy Valentine's Day to everyone.